I came up with the idea to write about the astronaut wives when I was sitting at home one day and looking at this coffee table book that dealt with the moon landings, turned a page and all of a sudden saw these wives in their poochy mini dresses with these skyrocketing beehives. And me and my husband were in a Mad Men kick at the time and I just <laughs> thought, you know, I have to tell their story. Why haven't we heard about it more? It's interesting because it was sort of an amazing story hiding in plain sight in that these women, they were on the cover of Life magazine and reporters like Regis Philbin were covering them. And so it was widely reported on, but it seems to have really been covered by the sands of time. Well, I think that we weren't quite ready to see the women in the background as heroes back then. <laughs> to give you a sense of this, all the astronauts lived in the so-called space burbs um, by NASA's operations in Houston. Two of the families built their homes without windows on the front. There are these odd-looking, almost ranch house fortresses just so the press wouldn't peer into their homes. And once a month, they would all get together for coffees and teas and sort of Tupperware affairs and um, were there for each other. Essentially, you have like this tribal group of women living alone during the week. Their men are at Cape Canaveral training, being followed around by astronaut groupies and they're sort of holding down the home front for themselves and also for their friends. One particularly harrowing aspect of their public lives was being watched while the flights were, were going up because their, their husbands were essentially guinea pigs at the start of the space race. These wives are well aware that their husbands might die on national TV, you right. know, and that minutes later they'll be expected to react to that feelings of fear and loneliness were all things they had to keep under the surface. They sort of coached each other with how to deal with the, being in the public eye. And Reen Carpenter, she had sort of a natural way with the media. She had wanted to be a writer and an actress. And she always told the other women, you know, if they ask you how you feel when your husband's on that giant stick of dynamite and you feel if you told your real reaction, you know, your husband would never get another flight, um, just say you're happy, proud, and thrilled. This was sort of their keep calm and carry on 1960s <laughs> style. Writing the book today, obviously, I wanted to probe many of those feelings that they felt they couldn't express to life because it had to be such a Boy Scout image for the astronauts and such a sort of Girl Scout image to match for the wives.